growing artificial ears, a new ban on cryptocurrency, and a move towards universal basic income. You're watching This Week in Science, where we explain how today's biggest stories will impact you tomorrow. Let's be honest. For better or worse, looks matter in our society. A lot. If you don't conform to what society says is normal, you're bullied, you're ostracized, and you're gawked at. This can and does cause serious harm, especially to children. This week, scientists took remarkable steps towards giving individuals around the globe solutions they so desperately need. In the 1990s, an ear was grown on the back of a famous Hikanti mouse. And for the first time ever, similar work was completed on living humans. In a world first, children were given new ears grown from their own cells. And while it's true that we have had prosthetic ears for some time now, these often come with serious issues, as prostheses are prone to infections. Growing ears from a person's own cells gets rid of this issue. So far, the procedure has been completed on five children, and though the final results are aesthetically mixed, the work has significant potential, and it could one day be used to repair other congenital deformities or treat patients with a host of disorders. Of course, it would be better if we could change the way that society thinks instead of changing the way that people look. But in the meantime, this work gives individuals around the globe ability to take power into their own hands. And in a somewhat controversial and unexpected move, Facebook announced that it's banning all ads promoting cryptocurrencies, including advertisements for Bitcoin, token launches, and initial coin offerings, or as they're more commonly known, ICOs. In their announcement, Facebook justified the ban by asserting that content is, quote, frequently associated with misleading or deceptive promotional practices. And to be honest, they aren't wrong. A lot of people don't really understand what cryptocurrencies are or how blockchain works. And this has led to a lot of scams and a lot of people being duped into losing their money. This is what ultimately prompted Facebook to try and crack down on the practice. But the broad and sweeping nature of the announcement raised a lot of eyebrows. And it's really not hard to see why. Because while it's true that there are some scams, it's also true that there are a lot of legitimate blockchain-based companies, companies that are creating things that have real-world utility. Already though, the volatile crypto market has started to respond to the announcement. Bitcoin, which is the world's largest cryptocurrency, dropped 11% on Thursday, reaching its lowest point since November. Other major cryptocurrencies, such as Ripple and Bitcoin Cash, saw double-digit declines in under 24 hours. But hopefully, these regulations and subsequent loans like it from various nations and organizations will bring some much-needed stability to the crypto market. And finally, the chief economic advisor to India's government said that parts of the nation will likely introduce a universal basic income in the next two years. If you aren't familiar with it, universal basic income is a guaranteed income that's given to all citizens, regardless of their social or economic standing. A true UBI would provide enough financial assistance to allow people to provide for all their basic life necessities. Some experts assert that UBI could be the answer to automation, that it would give us a way to assist people who are put out of work by AI and other new technological advancements. These same individuals add that UBI would offer less capacity for corruption than most other anti-poverty programs, because under this system, all individuals are entitled to the same amount of money. However, critics assert that it will cause greater reliance on government subsidies and that it does nothing more than provide a short-term solution, utterly ignoring the underlying problems of mass unemployment and unfair wealth distribution. Yet, already, a number of pilot programs have shown that there are tangible benefits to giving people a reliable source of income. It allows them to focus more on their families. It decreases stress and anxiety, and as a result, UBI actually improves work performance. However, these were all small-scale experiments. We have yet to see how it could be implemented on a large scale. But given that India has a population of 1.3 billion, it is entirely infeasible to roll out UBI nationally. However, a state-by-state -state strategy could work. Hopefully, we'll get some answers in the next couple of years. What do you think? Could UBI be a viable solution? Why or why not? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm Jolene, and thanks for watching.